Hi, I'm Patrick Hopper, and I'm the president of Open Systems Media. And today we are going to be talking about Embedded Computing Design's 2021 Interactive Media Kit. This year, our focus is going to be on, for marketers, uh, on uh, the digital transformation of your company during these crazy times. So today, I'm actually here with my cohorts, the Embedded Insiders, Rich Nass, who's the EVP of Embedded Computing Design, and his cohort, uh, Brandon Lewis, Editor-in-Chief. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Pat. Welcome to so, this edition of the Embedded Insiders. I'm Brandon hey. Lewis here with Rich Nass. Oh, no, 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 Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Wrong show, wrong show. <laughs> wrong show. This is the media. Oh, OK, OK, OK. So the oh, pandemic, oh. Well, hello, everyone. The, pan the pandemic has obviously changed the way we're doing business, and we as marketers need to adapt and change to meet today's engineers. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, before we get going, Brandon, can you kick us off and let it, let everybody know what the little widgets are at the bottom of the council? Sure. So um, upon entering, you'll see a bunch of widgets at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can click these to control a corresponding window. So if you notice the icon um, that has that's third from the right, it's got a little uh, handout. Um, that's what you use to download the presentation slide so you can follow along with the um, with a hard copy or forward to a friend later on. The other really important one is the sort of recycle one all the way to the left. And that's the one that you use to reset your configuration here on your screen because you can maximize your uh, screens here that you see you, know, you got your speaker bio and the speaker bio window the presentation and the pre presentation window um, there's also an ask a question box which is really important because we're going to be doing a q a at the end of this session so all you have to do to use that is type a question into the box and hit submit and that'll queue up for us at the end of the hour, and we will get to as many of those questions as we can. We're gonna do about 30 minutes of presentation today and then um, leave 15 to 30 minutes at the end to get to as many of those questions during the Q&A as possible, so make sure you submit. Great, thanks, Brandon. Um, so one thing in the handout that we have that if you guys wanna download at any time, we have the uh, media kit, we have the um, webcast calendar for 2021, we have our embedded world initiatives, and then we have our rate card as well. So you just keep that in the back of your mind. So one of the big things that the first steps that, that we look at for digital transformation is content. And we at Open Systems Media and specifically at Embedded Computing Design derive everything we do from content and driving traffic to our site. So whether you do content on your own or you need assistance, this is the number one thing that marketers are focused on in 2021. In fact, the number one challenge that they've had is actually finding good content writers. So people are looking not only within their own firm for their engineering department, but they're also looking for people like Open Systems Media to help with that content. And then what you're also seeing is uh, vendors pivoting from some of these live events to not only content marketing, but distribution of content marketing. So again, in the handout, you'll be able to see um, our editorial calendar for 2021. And I'm going to let Brandon and Rich kind of cover what we're going to be going over um, in the calendar. Notice in the calendar, we not only feature print, we feature our newsletters, we feature events, virtual events, and then obviously our, our industry leading webcast platform as well. So Brandon, off to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, whoa, 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 whoa. You, 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 you jumped the gun on me there, Pat. Um, like, like Pat was saying, you know, there's a whole big universe of, of content out there um, that you can, you know, it's, it, there's so much in fact that it's, it's, tr it's hard to get to know where to get started. Um, and a good, great place to get started is here our editorial calendar. Um, it's obviously highlighting a lot of things that are going on in the embedded and IoT industry, um, areas of interest to, from automotive to um, AI and machine learning and then it spans as pat mentioned some of the video offerings that we that we provide that we're going to get to a little bit later as well as podcast topics which we will also get to a little bit later webcasts etc drive diving deeper down even than the editorial calendar i went ahead and highlighted a couple of really cool options in 2021 that we're going to be doing from both an editorial and a promotional perspective so 
if you'll see these here, you might want to take a closer look. Um, it's split up into four different uh, sections because we outline things here by quarter. Um, I know that a lot of people do their planning now, either monthly or quarterly, and so this is a great way for you to take a look. But outside of the things, tools like this editorial calendar, if you're looking for a place to start, um, not only in terms of the medium, like I said, we have got the different vehicles that you can use over there in video, podcast, print, uh, newsletters, etc. cetera, uh, a great place to start is just asking us. Um, you know, you can email uh, Pat, Rich, or myself, I'm sure we have our contact information. Um, we, I know we have it on the media kit. This editorial calendar is also available in the media kit. And just ask us. You know, we we deal with this on a day in and day out basis. That's our job. That's our career. That's what we do. Um, so we've got a pretty good finger on the pulse of the industry, and we're happy to let you know what's trending on our site. You know, what's what's the feedback we're getting from our surveys, etc. So we're a really good resource. Don't don't let it go to waste. And, and just finish going through that, here. A couple of more. Go for it, Rich. I just wanted to say, I just want to talk about content for a minute before we move past this. Um, I've been in, in this industry for a very long time and there's been so much change and disruption with the, with the whole COVID thing notwithstanding, just over the last five, seven years, our industry has just changed upside down completely backwards. But the one thing that hasn't changed over all that time is how important content is. It's important to us, it's important to you, for lots of reasons, and I can't stress that enough, how important it is to have valuable content on your site, have valuable content that you've authored on our site. It builds trust, it builds community, and it builds your SEO. So these, these are really important things and is not to be taken lightly. Sorry, Brandon, I just needed to get that out there. No, it's perfectly fine, and it gave me enough time to cycle through the rest of our very robust 2021 editorial calendar. Um, we're on Q4 now. I'll pivot out. Um, on to Let's Get Social, right, Pat? Back to you. Yes. So, um, obviously, once you've written the content, the key is, what do I do with it? So, obviously, if you come on our site and, and you feature a blog, a, a press release, a news item, a design article, um, it gets featured right on our homepage. Um, we also repurpose it in our digital newsletter. We have the IoT, Embedded AI, Automotive, uh, European, and our Embedded Daily newsletters. They get featured on the newsletter, and then they get pushed out via our social platforms. We're very active on LinkedIn. We're very active on Facebook and Twitter. Collectively, we have over 80,000 followers following us just on social alone. <clears throat> so... Um, the good news is whatever content you get us, we're getting it out to our audience. And then whatever we push out to our audience, we're also obviously tracking. We're tracking not only clicks, but we're tracking who's reading it. We're looking at the behavior of all of our readers and then obviously serving them up the best content that fits their needs. So that's step one for our digital transformation. Step two is what do we do with our events? So as most of you guys know, we haven't had an event in over a year, and um, who knows what that's going to look like in 2021. The biggest event in our space is Embedded World, and that's coming up digitally in uh, early March 2021. And we've come up with several programs that will help enhance what you're doing at Embedded World. And, and the things that we do really well at a show like this are product launches, um, lead generation, surveys, activity, engaging uh, with our content around uh, engineers that are going to the show. In fact, over the last couple of years, you'll be able to see the t-shirt the behind me. Um, we've handed out more than 10,000 t-shirts over the last four years, generated over 10,000 leads from people coming to our booth, listening to speakers, getting dev kits, and we're going to be expanding these elements for Embedded World this year um, through our content platforms. But one of the coolest things that we're going to be doing, and I'm going to let Brandon uh, speak a little bit more on this, is our, is our embedded world in a box. So, Brandon, why don't you take over and tell us a little bit about that? 
Yeah, certainly. So, um, as Pat mentioned, uh, there's, there are no in-person events this year, um, or for the past year. And we need to figure out a way of doing something that's a little bit more engaging than what we have seen, which is essentially just a lot of webcasts that have been repurposed, um, really quickly, uh, and not really given the same amount of value that we were accustomed to seeing at live in-person physical shows. So what's the best way to have a physical show in a time when you can't have mass gatherings and physical shows is to try to bring the show to the engineer, to the audience that would have been there anyway. And that spawned the idea of Embedded World in a Box. So I know a lot of you out there are probably familiar with that, you know, monthly, or I get a sock box or I get clothes delivered to me. This is essentially the same thing. Think of anything that you would be able to find or get or access at a virtual or at a trade show, an in-person trade show in the box. So this could be anything from uh, flyers, you know, any type of pens, collateral assets. Um, we ourselves are going to be uh, putting a t-shirt into the box as well as a tote bag and there are sponsorship opportunities there. And the benefit to our partners is obviously to get your physical collateral actually in front of an engineer the same way that we've been doing with print magazines for years. Um, we are going to have something that points uh, the recipients of the box to our uh, magazine. But also, if you are doing a virtual event of your own, either with Open Systems Media, with um, Embedded World, it may be a great opportunity for you to put something in there to drive uh, attendees to your virtual event or webcast as well. Perhaps you have some sort of discount code. Perhaps you have some sort of free uh, registration. Perhaps you have something that says, you know, free licenses to X tool or software for those who uh, type in this uh, code and visit this URL. So just a lot of unique ways that we can get in in front of people who otherwise uh, may not be aware of the fact that you are still out there, you are still doing something, given the inundation of all of the virtual offerings that are out there in the market right now. Cool. We've had a lot of people asking about uh, face masks and hand sanitizers to go in there too. That's a great way to tie it in. Uh, Brandon, tell us a little bit about the distro uh, that we're doing um, and, and what regions we're focusing on. Yeah, for sure. So obviously Embedded World is an international show. People from all over the world attend every year. So that makes logistics a little bit of an issue, something that we had to consider. So what we're doing right now for the first box that we've done um, of this kind is a thousand boxes are going to be shipped to engineers and engineering uh, executives in the EMEA region, and then another thousand in the United States. So um, if you, if the registrant fills out and qualifies, so that means that they, we need a business, uh, we need a business email, we need their, obviously their physical address to send this to them, name, title, company, etc. cetera, um, they will qualify for the box and the first thousand of them in each of those regions will receive one for free. Good, yeah. So to wrap this up, you entered some swag in the box, you're going to be participating in the leads. You can choose your region, and we're going to be delivering this same experience for Embedded World to thousands of engineers uh, in Europe and the United States. Now, besides Embedded World in a Box, we also have lots of other options to take advantage of. So we have, um, and again, the things that we are really good at is product launches, content creation, uh, and lead generation. So um, you'll notice here, and, and again, in the, um, in the handout, you can download all of this stuff. It's right here. Uh, but we have product launches, videos, uh, webcast speaking sessions, a coding contest, dev kit lottery, best in show awards, top things to see at the show. And then we obviously have our embedded world print edition magazine that's going to be at the show as well. So, um, or that's going to be distributed to everybody that's not only signed up for the embedded world in a box, but are, are also our distribution as well. So are you going to be um, at the show? Really I'll be there virtually. I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got two things. We got content. We got events covered. The third thing we're going to be talking about is lots of ways to get engaged with engineers. So, choosing your channel, choosing your marketing option. So we've talked about blogs, we've talked about um, design articles, but we also have some pretty cool other ways to engage with engineers on the platform that they tend to like the most. So Brandon, I'll take it back off to you. So you tell us a little bit about what we got going on in the next couple slides. Sure, yeah, and Rich is definitely gonna um 
echo my sentiments here, but event essentially we talked a lot about you know content being king and and the fact that you need to be out there. It's just the problem is today is where is out there because there's so many out there's right. Uh, you you need to have a video presence. You need to have a podcast presence. You need to have uh, you know your written word, obviously, but is that in the newsletter? Is that uh, on a website? Is it on our website, your website? Is it, um, you know, where do you even begin? So one of the challenges that a lot of our partners are facing is, is you know, how, how to pick the right channel and how to get out there. Pat also said social media. And one of the things that we've been working on for years now is uh, nurturing all of those different media channels. And because of that, we've come up with uh, video products like DevKit Weekly, Embedded Solutions Video, and Embedded Toolbox, and then also podcasts um, like I thought we were on today, Embedded Insiders, where Rich and I have a, a friendly banter every uh, every week um, and then invite on some industry experts. And then also Embedded Executives, which Rich is going to get on, uh, is going to explain in a little bit. Excellent. So, Rich, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Embedded Insiders podcast? Sure do. As, as Brandon said, that's where um, we pick a topic of the week. It's something that's timely, something that's in the news. And um, we just give our opinion. Uh, we've been around for a while. We know who the right people are. We know which stones to turn over. And, um, and we find out the facts. And this is the place where we report those facts to you. And it it is on a weekly basis. And then we bring in a guest if we're a little uh, uncomfortable with the subject, if it's if it's a little more than we think we can handle, we'll bring in an expert who can set us straight. So, and it's, and it's a lot of fun. It's one of the things I look forward to every week. Yeah, so Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about the next slide here about who's tuning in to listen to all this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, this on this slide, you can see some of the statistics of a podcast we just released uh, at the at the end of last week. Um, so already, you can see just within a few days uh, the distribution of of who's listening and how they're listening is broken down here. And and this is just sort of to support that earlier point about you need to be in all of these different places. And how do you do that? Um, so this is one of the reasons that it's really important to engage um, with somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do a podcast, who has a captive audience, um, and just make sure that you're able to reach all of these different uh, endpoints. Because as you can see, there's a lot here in terms of not only the podcast platform that people are tuning into, but you, just the device that they're listening on, and all of those things really make a difference. Um, and you know, that's one of the things that we're here to help with. Let me differentiate between the embedded insiders and the embedded executive. Uh, at, in the embedded insiders, we get down in the trenches and we and we really talk about um, the nuts and bolts of the technology. Uh, in the in embedded executive podcast, um, just like the name implies, every week I speak to an executive in, in the embedded industry. We're, we're at a 20,000 foot level and we're generally talking about standards, industry trends and, and, and things like that. Thanks. Well, one of, as we've talked about podcasts, we're now phasing into video and we have some really cool video options. Um, so Brando, why don't you tell us a little bit what we got coming up with these? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, if a picture is worth a thousand words, I, a video is worth a million. I actually stole that from one of our friends, Sean Prestridge over at IAR. Um, but we have a, a uh, several video offerings that we've developed over the last few years while we've been nurturing our YouTube audience. Um, it's important to note that right now, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. It's only second to uh, its parent company, Google. So obviously, um, SEO is very important. Google happens to weight video more heavily than other forms of content right now. So having a video strategy and enough video content out there um, is becoming more and more important, just like it was to have a basic uh, text SEO strategy, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And actually, we've got a couple of little snippets of DevKit uh, Weekly and Embedded Toolbox that we're going to show you really quickly. And I'll jump in um, about halfway through and tell you what you're looking at. Well, doesn't this look familiar? But it's not the same. Who's we're that? Weekly, week <laughs> what a good looking guy. <laughs> A Needs a shave. <laughs> it's quarantine. We're also giving away five. So, um, 
This is DevKit Weekly, and what DevKit Weekly is, is an opportunity, if you have an evaluation board, if you have a development kit, um, to send it to us, and myself or Perry Cohen, our associate editor, will take a look at it. It's sort of an unboxing video. Um, the way that this started was that I was going to trade shows. You know, I, usually in non-pandemic times, Rich and I are on the road at least a week a month, and at every trade show I'd be at, People would give me two, three, four, five development kits, and you know, I would say, you know, I'm really going to fiddle around with this once I once I get back to the office, and then I'd get back to the office, have a pile of stuff on my desk. You know, I'll I'll get to it next week. Well, next month. Well, when am I going to get to this? So I was thinking, you know, as these dev kits started piling up on my desk, uh, what am I going to do with all of these? You know, who, what's what's a good use? I can't just throw them away. Um, oh, well, we've got a an audience of several hundred thousand engineers who would probably love to take advantage of this. So what we started doing was a quick review of not only the kit itself with all the IO and interfaces, et cetera, but also whatever the feature technology was on the kit. So usually on a dev kit, there's something like a processor or a piece of uh, like a power semiconductor or some sort of sensor. That's really the, you know, the highlight of the kit, the reason that the kit was, was created by whatever company created it. And we focus in on that technology. We focus on how the kit can help um, an engineer achieve whatever they would like to with it. Um, and then we raffle it off. So we, we pick a name out of the hat for however many kits we happen to have on hand. And we send it off to the winning engineer anywhere in the world. Um, then that's for free to them. Um, so you can definitely part with the partner with us and take advantage of that. They're uh, editorial offerings or sponsored offerings, you know, all the way uh, up the ladder. But a, an important thing to note is that these, these kits by themselves are really just paperweights unless you have tools um, to actually do something with them. So we started thinking, you know, what's the next step of this? How can we really maximize the value of these of these platforms to engineers? And that's where we came up with Embedded Toolbox. So I'll let you take a quick look at this and then sort of explain what that is before we move on. Things here. But it's possible that I don't care about a lot of these. I might only care about a certain percentage of these. And if you think about large code bases, there could be hundreds right. of findings. So I might want to focus just on, let's say, potential buffer overflows, which in ADA is called an array index check. Now we can see a, uh, an example of this at the bottom where we actually see in this geo filter package a low probability and it's saying array index check might fail. And it's saying that x underscore average, the variable, needs to be between negative 15 and 15. Now, if we were to actually look at this piece. So basically what that is, is that um, was one of our friends over at, from, over at AdaCore, Rob Tice, um, walking me through how you can use um, AdaCore static analysis tools to uh, find buffer overflows within a code base. So essentially, in other words, what that means is, all right, so now you've, you've developed something on your dev kit and you want to write an actual application, or maybe you're trying to get a file system or a library or, or you know just some some component some technological component up and running on that kit or, or anything for that matter um, embedded toolbox allows you to showcase how tools software stacks are able to be used in the real world as you can see that's an interact screen share demonstration um, slash interview where Rich or I would jump in and ask questions um, to us to solve something. You know, the point of it is to be actionable. We want to overcome an actual challenge and show an engineer how they could use your solution uh, to achieve an outcome. Um, and that's what embedded toolbox is. So you can see how the solutions start stacking on top of one one another. And these are really good options if you're thinking about trying to replace what would happen at a trade show, because um, you could think of DevKit Weekly as perhaps, you know, your, your product display case. Um, here's a here's a kit. Here's your product. You know, the, here it is. Touch it, feel it, grab it. Um, embedded toolbox could be something like uh, what, you know, this is your product demonstration. Um, you know, here's the demo. Come feel it out. Take a look at it. And then there's also a third um, option that Rich touches on, um, which, is, which, is, which Rich is going to touch on, which is called embedded solutions video. And that offers another another element to it. And after he's done with that, I'll, I'll tell you what you're looking at looking at here on the screen. Seems so to be which a one recurring you want theme. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, was, I was saying no, it's I, a recurring theme that we have to get our message, or you have to get your message out to our readers. Um, our editors are constantly hearing presentations from 
the community. Um, and it dawned on me that it would be just as good for the vendor to speak to the community on their own. So what we do is we have the embedded solutions video where the vendor goes through the PowerPoint presentation and then somebody on, on our team, either me or Brandon or Perry or somebody else, will ask the questions that the engineer most likely would have asked if he was hearing that presentation. If there's something more he needed to know, if it was specific to his application, and that's called the embedded solutions video. Usually lasts about 15 minutes or so. So Brandon, why don't hey. you share with us who's watching all these things? Yeah, so I think this is a really important thing to note. You know, back, um, you know, in the early in years ago, we would think of you know, who's using YouTube. Um, you know, who's, who's watching things on YouTube? Why would anybody, um, who's a serious engineer be, um, you know, perusing YouTube where there are all these cat videos and stuff? Well, it turns out that people grow up. And right now, as you can see with the age distribution, you know, there are a ton of younger engineers on YouTube, but there's also a significant number of people who are in the 35 to 44 range and even, and even, uh, more mature than that. So YouTube is becoming, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, a really solid, uh, audience, you know, across, uh, the, you know, the professional experience spectrum. Of course, it's really good to get in front of those younger engineers um, early and, you know, build a, a, re a reputation or build a relationship with them. Um, but it's not just, you know, in college kids or, you know, makers anymore. It's it's distributed both in terms of age and in terms of the geography. Um, obviously, we've got a pretty strong presence in the United States. But um, as you can see, there are a bunch of those postage stamp um, European countries uh, that are listed down there um, on the geographies and then the times of day that people are using is really solid to support what I was just saying about the types of people who are using, um, who are watching um, our YouTube channel, their business hours. So proof point there. I do appreciate you making me just more mature. <laughs> <laughs> No, I have to figure right, up so yeah. fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the number one thing, the final thing that we're going to be talking about today, and the thing that's most important for marketers is account-based marketing. This is one of the hottest topics that we're seeing right now, um, and it's the ability to effectively go in and target accounts based on account name, account size, geography, revenue, key job titles. These are very important things. So we are using um, all of our technologies from Salesforce, Salesforce campaigns, Marketo, Intrato, all of our social platforms to delivering the right content to the right people. We're out there capturing all the data that we can get. So we're always ensuring that if you're trying to target a specific audience, we know up to the minute who that right audience is and who, what they've been reading and what they've been doing. So the key to account-based marketing and why it's so relevant is because we increase our exposure with specific accounts, it delivers the best ROI, and it gives the marketer the ability to drive the right content to the right account. So I put down here on, on this slide um, just some key steps to account-based marketing that we work with you on with our account team and, and even our uh, editorial team if needed. Um, and we work with you on defining goals, determining who the, the your key job titles, account names, who you're trying to target. Then we look at the client journey. So maybe it's we're looking at delivering a white paper and then following up with a webinar, or perhaps we're doing a webinar and following up with a survey and then delivering a white paper or a case study later. Then we're gonna execute the program, we're gonna measure the results, we're gonna give the leads to the sales team, and then we're going to continue our nurture campaign along the path to ensure that we're constantly dripping on these leads um, right in new content. So hopefully we got, uh, we've learned from the, the, our successes and mistakes on this. We rinse, repeat, and then we continue. We at Open Systems are constantly being graded on the quality of leads that we're generating. Um, this year uh, in 2020, as of December, we generated over 20,000 leads on our webcast platform and over 21,000 leads on our white paper platform. So these are things that are gonna become more and more into play in uh, 2021 uh, as for next year. 
So now some takeaways. So um, Rich, why don't you talk first about some of the takeaways with regard to content? Absolutely. Uh, as we said earlier, content is king. Um, that content should be on your site. That content should be on our site, should be on other media company site. Um, it should be on other third party site. It helps you with your SEO. Uh, it helps you build a community. It helps you build trust with that community. Can't stress it enough. Yep. And then obviously using platforms like, like our embedded computing design, our social platforms, our newsletters, our websites to get that content into the hands of engineers. Um, Brandon, why don't you share a bit about different types of content? Yeah, so like we've touched on throughout, um, we, we didn't even get to all of the different types of mediums that you should probably be um, invested in if you're trying to expand your digital, digital footprint. You know, there are other, a whole flurry of other uh, different outlets, um, but you've got to make sure that you start with the key ones and those are, you know, you want to have a video strategy. You obviously, if you don't have um, a digital content strategy that pertains to blogs um, and design articles, send me an email like right now because you're way behind. Um, we can help you figure that out. Um, obviously, podcasts are another great place to just make sure that your message is heard. Um, but it's really important that you take one piece of content. And this is really, you know, something that, that we can help you with. And, and all you really need to get started is if you have one idea, you know, don't think about every piece of content that you're creating as having to be an isolated project that needs to be spun up on its own and, you know, and started from scratch. You know, one piece of content can be used, uh, repurposed across a lot of different media um, to get the most mileage out of it. And um, you know, that's something, like I said, we can help you architect. Good point. One Good of the point. other elements of that is that you have to stay in. You may not see the result yeah, yeah. of something over the first couple of weeks, over the first month, but you have you have to keep at it. And if, if you're blogging, you have to blog once a month, twice a month, and you have to do it for six months. If you're doing social media, you have to do it on a daily basis and you have to do it for six months. Otherwise, it's it's almost as bad as not doing it at all. Correct. You know, the 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 consistency is at least as important as the as the fact that you wrote one fantastic article. You know, the quality mm -hmm. obviously is important, but you have to be consistent because you've got to remember, I mean, the Internet is a big, scary place and there's a ton of noise out there. Um, so if you're if you fall off the radar, you really fall off the radar. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And as we talked about earlier, shift some of that early event money. If your event's not coming on to get some content created, get work on distribution. Um, that's where a lot of marketers are focusing their efforts for 2021. Um, and then obviously get good writers that can write good content. Um, two final things to wrap up before we get to our Q&A is exploit the community and the uh, virtual events that are happening. We happen to like Embedded World. There's also CES, IoT World, lots of other Computex, lots of other global events that are going virtual. Um, get involved, get in the mix around um, those events. And then obviously the one we talked about with account-based marketing is really focus on the leads that matter and developing a digital strategy to focus on those leads using account-based marketing. That's the end of our presentation for for now, but we're going to open it up for questions in the Q and A. So let's get things started. Okay, so our first question comes out to um, from our friend in Europe, and that is, I have a limited budget. What should I be doing for 2021 with that budget? So Brandon, I'm going to open that question up to you, uh, then Rich, and then um, I'll chirp in. Um, well, we'll uh, pick up right where we left off. Um, make sure that you have uh, a pretty comprehensive content strategy that allows you to touch a bunch of different mediums um, in the interim. You know, that could be uh, either through blogs or videos, podcasts, um, and then there are also avenues like the, like the whole box concept. And if you're going to do um, a webinar, or a virtual event, make sure that you're doing it in a way that is unique, that differentiates what you're doing from everything else that's out there. 
right now. I mean, obviously you're you're using our webinar platform right now in Trotto. Um, a ton of people are on Zoom and Zoom is great for certain things. It's not so great for other things. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're not just recycling the same thing um, that this audience is hearing now, you know, over and over and over in the same way. The first thing that I would add to that is it, it depends what your goals are. Um, there's no just instant answer to that question. It depends what it is that you're trying to do. Which audience are you trying to reach? Is it is it around a product launch? Do you have a new technology? Are you, it, it, is it for a certain kind of, of, of engineer? So those are all the questions you have to ask before you actually ask that question. But the other important aspect of that is that if you have a limited budget, you should certainly be taking advantage of you should, you should be taking advantage of the things that we offer that you don't have to pay for. Um, we're happy to post all your blogs. And as we talked about just a few minutes ago, that is really important. Um, you need to be doing social media um, and all, the, all these other things that we have to offer that you don't actually have to pay dollars for. You have to pay for it in your time to develop some of them, but, um, but, but you don't have to pay us anything for that. Yeah, and I'll add to that that um, obviously the things that you don't have to pay for, the, the editorial content, our news, uh, PR, blogs, design articles, um, the embedded insiders. We have guests on that, embedded executives. Um, and then we also have introductory programs to the Dev Kit Weekly and Embedded Toolbox as well. Um, the one thing that I would suggest um, doing with a limited budget, is assuming that you're looking for leads, is really get involved with our webcast platform. We do about 70 webinars a year. We average somewhere between 150 and 450 leads. Uh, you can join in on topics that we're already covering, like AI, IoT, Industry 4.0 slash 5.0 type things. So it's a good way to get involved with several other vendors and, and present on a topic. Um, okay, next question is about dev kits. This gentleman said, I have a dev kit. What are the best ways that I can get this out? Brandon, I'm going to pick on you for that. Well, obviously, like we touched on, there's DevKit Weekly. Um, so uh, you, we have a form that's up on our website that you can submit a development kit. Um, obviously, you can just email me as well. It's brandon.lewis at Um and, and, shoot, and, and I'll send you back the address, and you can just mail it out to me. Keep in mind, you won't get it back because we raffle the dev kits off. Um, but yeah, you can start with a dev kit weekly and then there are a bunch of other things. Obviously we touched on the possibility of um, don't, you know, of putting something in the box of, of tying a development kit, uh, to a, to an actual virtual event that you're working on. Um, Pat touched on dev kit raffles, things that we do of that nature. So there are a lot of different, um, avenues and, you know, the, the first place to start is probably dev kit weekly, which happens every week. Okay. Thank you. Um, last question before we wrap up is that uh, we have, I have a new product launch coming out at Embedded World. What are my options? Um, so we have a couple real easy things um, and, and we haven't really touched on this yet, but we have a product of the week campaign that your product is featured uh, live for the week on Embedded Computing Design which is embeddedcomputing.com. And by the way, we are launching our new website on January 1st, right, Brandon? Is that right? Um, yes, that's correct. So we have our uh, product of the week campaign. I'm so excited, Brandon. <laughs> He's been working many, many it's hours. Not done yet. It's not done yet. <laughs> um, so we have uh, a product launch video. We can do a product of the week campaign. Um, obviously, submit your news to us so we can cover it there. Um, and then we have a top things to see um, at Embedded World as well. Um, so uh, actually, we got one more Then I sneak in and then I promise we're done after that. Uh, we got a question that said, can you expand more on how you can help us promote our content on your site? So I'm let me start with that. One. Um, if you send us something to post, every piece of content that is, is on our site ends up in our daily newsletter. It goes out every day to about uh, 20,000 people, and it is what was, what was posted on the site the day before. So that's one of the main drivers in how, how we would promote your content. Pat, I'll let you pick up from there. 
Um, and obviously we talked a little bit about that if, if it's featured on the site, we're also uh, featuring it on our social platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And then, um, so one piece of content featured on our site um, is, is featured uh, across many, many of our platforms. All right, um, we, do we have time for one more? Actually, we got another question here. Uh, let's see. Uh, my question is, what do does it do to the OSM video program cost structure and when YouTube begins charging for commercial video uploads? So, well, that's uh, not what the question said, Pat. The question actually said, Rich, you're the best looking of the three out there, <laughs> but, and then you continue on with the rest of the question. I was paraphrasing. Uh, <laughs> what's the video program's cost structure? Um, do you want to tackle that one of you guys? Sure. Um, so obviously a lot of the, a lot of the videos that we do almost, well, basically all of them are, are editorial in nature. Um, you know, they're not designed as product pitches. They're designed as educational platforms. You know, this dev kit, like here's a dev kit. If you, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with one, I hope that this is going in the screen. Um, if you're not, um, familiar with the dev kit, we tell you what, what it does, what the things are working underneath the hood that allow you to accomplish X in X uh, application or vertical. Same thing with uh, embedded toolbox. You know, we're showing how you can use a tool to uh, overcome some some sort of challenge. So they're editorial videos, they're not commercial, they're not commercials. Obviously there are options to do that type of video as well, where you're, um, you know, you're putting up an ad uh, and that's something that we can certainly help with. But the things that we've talked about today are not, don't fall under the banner of a commercial video. Yeah, and, and one thing to keep in mind too is that there, for all of our video options for Embedded Toolbox and DevKit Weekly, there is a base level that you can, anybody can contribute and participate. We, we have 52 weeks a year, so we slot one each week um, and, and everybody can participate in that. Rich, did you want to add something? I just wanted to say that right now that we're done, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to listen to our webinar. If you have any questions after the fact, please reach out to us. We're here, we're here to help you. So let us do that. Um, that's all I want to add. Tune in next week to the Embedded Insiders. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks a lot. This has been fun.